Hello, I'm Sawyer Richardson, and I've been assigned by Brother Greg to teach a What Did Jesus Say class. We are now at week number 12, and the topic I've been assigned to is The Wise Man and the Foolish Man. This subject can be found on pages 66 and 67 of your What Did Jesus Say book. But the main passage that we'll be reading today in the Bible is Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, if you would like to go ahead and be flipping there in your Bibles. Now let's remember, this is Jesus' famous Sermon on the Mount. And according to Matthew's account, this is the last thing Jesus says. So we're led to believe that this, these are his final remarks. Let's go ahead and read this passage. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. There are many interesting things that we see in this passage, and we see one particularly interesting thing right off the bat. Jesus says in verse 24, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Now let's focus on those words, hears and does these sayings. Now one might ask, what are these sayings that Jesus is referring to? Well, really he is referring to his, the whole Bible. But more specifically, he is referring to the things he has said in this Sermon on the Mount. These things can be found in chapters 5, 6, and before this passage in chapter 7 of Matthew. Now notice, he says, whoever hears these things and does them. Let's first discuss the hearing aspect of this. As we see in the plan of salvation, hearing is the very first thing that we must do in order to obtain salvation. At some point, we were all introduced to the gospel, whether that is being raised in the church, or it could be that you are introduced to it at an older age. Regardless, we were all introduced to this at some point, and this is what started our foundation. Hearing and following all of God's Word is an essential part of our salvation. If we are not studying the Word of God, then we are really not hearing all of what God wants us to. This is why we as Christians must make a conscious effort to read the Word of God as often as we can. It does not even have to be a lot at one time, but reading God's Word daily or even every two days can help us tremendously in our walk with God. We must keep in mind that we all can learn from the Bible, from young Christians to Christians who have been in the church for many years. Let's flip over to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work. As we see here, we can all learn new things from the Bible each and every time that we read it. And we can be reminded of the things that we have learned from the Bible in the past. So, now that we have read some of God's Word, then what do we do with it? Well, we need to apply it to our lives. Now, this is obviously easier said than done. You see, it's easy to hear the scriptures, and don't get me wrong, reading the scriptures is a very good thing to do. But, if we do not apply them to our lives, then it's not doing us any good. 
I know for sure that every time at my house someone says for the trash to be taken out, I'm not a very big fan of getting up and taking it out, even though it's really my job. But if I just sit there and not take out the trash, knowing it needs to go to the curb before it's picked up, then it does no good. Just as this is not acceptable for the trash, we must make sure we apply the knowledge that we have of God's Word to our daily lives. So, how can we apply God's Word into our lives? I would say to start focusing to improve on at least one aspect of our walk with God each week. We can do this by looking at sections in the Bible that give us information about particular subjects. Then, we can take steps to doing it in that week by setting goals. And as we go along, we might can even possibly make this a daily habit. Now, it is important to remember in this that we cannot let someone else build our spiritual houses for us. We might have someone introduce us to the gospel, but it is our responsibility to build our own spiritual home. No one else besides ourselves can make this commitment. It must be us. If we do this, we are building a great foundation that is built on Jesus Christ and His words. I want to talk a second about the analogy that we see in the scripture, or in the passage rather, pardon me please, about the rain, floods, and winds. Now, one might ask, what is this referring to in our lives? Well, this is referring to the many trials that we will face here on earth. As Christians, we know that if we are doing it right, we will be persecuted for our faith in one way or another. We see this concept many times in the Bible. But let's go back to where we just were in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and let's look at verse 12. It says, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Jesus Christ will suffer persecution. Right off the bat, this is a very sad verse. But really, it's just the truth. At one point or another, we will experience persecution if we are living our lives right for Christ. But let's not look at this verse with a sad view. Instead, let's look at it with a positive point of view, like we are told to in James chapter 1, Verses 2 and 3. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Here, James is telling us to count it joy that we are being put through these things for the cause of Christ. If we again have that spiritual house that has Christ as the foundation, then we will be taken care of. And we will not have to worry because we know that God is with us at all times, even in the bad ones, as long as we put our trust in Him. Now, if we do not have this foundation, then it's, not going, to, then it's going to be very bad for us, not only here on earth, but even more so on Judgment Day. Going back to Matthew chapter 7, verses 24-27, through 27, I do not believe that it is just a coincidence that the verses before talk about Judgment Day. Remember, this passage is directly after verses 21 through 23 of Matthew chapter 7, in which Jesus, in which Jesus had words to say regarding Judgment Day. If you watched last week's video of this series, you saw our brother Lathan teaching on this topic. And if you haven't already, by the way, I would recommend you go back and watch it. But in that passage, Jesus talks about Judgment Day and then what will happen. You see, Judgment Day is the biggest storm that we will ever go through. With a foundation of sand, we might be able to make it through some rain, and maybe a little wind, and maybe even a little itty-bitty storm. But that foundation does not stand a chance in a huge storm. The same is true of our foundations. If our foundation is made of anything other than Jesus Christ, we might be able to make it through life 
and all the things that life throws at us, barely. But on Judgment Day, that poor foundation is going to be exposed majorly, and it will not survive that storm. So, what can we do now that we know how to build our foundation for our spiritual house? Well, like any house, we have to make sure that there is no damage. All homeowners should know, if you have damage in the foundation of your home, then you have a major issue. A house cannot stand, or at least stand for very long, if the foundation is damaged. So, how do we keep our spiritual house in check? We can do this by making sure that we stay in God's Word and keep growing as Christians in the kingdom and looking at Jesus' example, which, the foundation, which is the foundation for our spiritual home. We should be reading Scripture often and discussing it with other Christians in order to grow. Another thing we can do with this information is spread it to others. I spoke earlier about how that we cannot build other people's foundations for them. But what we can do is share with them the gospel and encourage them to build their foundations on Jesus Christ and his example. As we conclude, I hope that this study has been beneficial to you. I know that it certainly was to me. And I challenge you, and myself for that matter, to grow and maintain your spiritual house, and to encourage others to do the same.